So a lot of you guys have been commenting about how the second season of The Bad Batch seems to be moving very slowly. Like, not a lot is happening at all, and a lot of the episodes seem like filler, which I guess is a fair assessment. But if you haven't seen episodes 7 and 8, which were released both on the same day, you probably should check it out because things are starting to pick up a little bit. We've gone back to that central question, which The Bad Batch seems to be perfectly positioned to answer, and that is, what is going to happen to all the clones? At the end of the Clone Wars, there were millions of active duty clones in service across the galaxy and in the Outer Rim Sieges. And then just a few years later in shows like Andor and Kenobi, the clones are mostly gone. Where did they go? And since the clones are like really beloved by my generation of Star Wars fans, I think it's about time we find out what happened to them. I originally theorized the main issue with the clones would be that many of their numbers would simply begin to revolt, either because of mistreatment, fear of being replaced, or just general revulsion over the terrible things that they were being forced to do by the Empire. And there were signs amongst the clones that it wasn't just going to be Captain Rex and the Bad Batch who were fed up with the Empire. We witnessed in the last season of the Bad Batch Captain Hauser's side with Champs Handula and the Ryloth people against the Imperial occupation. And then of course there's the defecation defection. No defecation of Commander Cody, who was fed up with doing the Empire's dirty, dirty work. Everything seemed to be pointing towards a mass rebellion of the clones, which would be a logical reason why the Empire would have them replace. But of course, Emperor Palpatine, as usual, is several steps ahead of everyone. Just like with his grand plan to destroy the Jedi, Palpatine gets others to do his dirty work. And in this case, it's Vice Admiral Rampart, a young Imperial officer eager to climb the power hierarchy of the Empire. From the very moment we first see him, there is something off about him. Which is easy to say in hindsight, but he just never seemed to fit in that Imperial uniform very well. See, Rampart was more of a technocrat than a warrior or even a soldier. The first project we see him in charge of is the implementation of the chain codes, a standard form of identification that would be used to catalog all Imperial citizens. This was the perfect job for a bureaucrat, a project manager, someone who was good at rolling out government programs and managing all of the logistics and infrastructure needed to keep that program running. It fit Vice Admiral Rampart's skill set perfectly. For any career officer in the Empire, the implementation of a program this large would be like the pinnacle of one's career. But not Admiral Rampart. No, he would immediately be placed in charge of a second program, Project War Mantle, the Empire's replacement program for the clone troopers. Now, it's generally understood that the clone troopers were prohibitively expensive. It took around nine years for them to get from VAT to Battlefield, but they were a necessary expense during the Clone Wars when the uh, Republic was getting overwhelmed by the separate destroyed armies. Clone troopers will be needed to maintain order throughout the galaxy. Indeed, a service conscription soldiers could provide at half the cost. Now, Tarkin was busy with a lot of different projects. He was probably working on the earliest renditions of Project Stardust, aka the Death Star program. And so he basically um, delegates this responsibility to someone else. And so he leaves Project War Mantle in the capable hands of Vice Admiral Rampart. Or was he capable? Vice Admiral Rampart had some strange beliefs. For one, he believed that the clones weren't truly loyal because they had to be programmed to be loyal. Our clones have been trained since their creation. Hmm. Skills can be taught. The loyalty of those who willingly enlist is what I see tremendous value in. It's at this point I realized that Vice Admiral Rampart is kind of an idiot and perhaps a bit naive. For one, he doesn't understand the clones. They are loyal. They're known for their loyalty. And two, he seems to be very ideologically invested in this idea of the Empire. And he definitely seems to project his own loyalty to the Empire onto other people. The members of his experimental volunteer non-clone elite force is anything but loyal. They do not see the Empire in the same way he sees it. With the Empire, I get paid, I get fed, and I have a roof over my head. That's more than the Republic ever did for me. 
This soldier clearly sees this position as a job. He gets paid and he gets fed. Loyalty is not necessarily required in this situation. And mind you, these guys were specifically selected by Rampart for this elite unit. Now, just imagine what the rank and file conscripts and volunteers in the TK Trooper program will be like. I think Rampart is way over his head here. He clearly does not have much combat experience. I don't really think he understands what it means to be a soldier. But idiotic guys like Rampart made the perfect puppet for someone as smart as Emperor Palpatine. You might not see much of Palpatine in The Bad Batch or in any other show, but he is clearly the one who makes all of the decisions in the Empire. And yes, he correctly assessed that the Clone Trooper program was far too expensive. I also think the ruthless efficiency of the clones during Order 66 probably even freaked him out a bit. If they were so quick to turn against the Jedi, who's to say that the Clone Troopers couldn't be used against him? We can also see that in these early days of the Empire, the Imperial Senate was still functional. Public opinion actually still mattered, and Palpatine couldn't just get rid of the clone troopers because he wanted to. For one, they were widely popular all across the galaxy, and this is because of the Republic propaganda that Palpatine created just a few years earlier. The clones were especially popular in the core regions of the galaxy, especially after they defended Coruscant from that Separatist invasion. And now with Senator Rio Chuchi taking up the clones cause in the Senate and fighting for the rights, the situation was going to be even more complicated. After all they have sacrificed, you now wish to discard them, leave them with nothing. Is that how we repay them for their service? I mean, the last thing that this cash-strapped emperor wanted was for the Senate to be discussing a potential pension program for all of the clone troopers and like job retraining and housing, and all these very costly things. Remember, Palpatine wants to build a huge military full of stormtroopers and star destroyers, and he hasn't even gotten to the point where he's able to do that yet. And so this is where Vice Admiral Rampart comes into play. And I actually have to give him some credit here. He's quite good at pretending to be non-confrontational and hiding his true intentions. Whether he's around the Twi'leks or the Kaminoans, Admiral Rampart always tries to say exactly what he thinks the other person wants to hear. And he'll continue to do that until he no longer requires your services. Imagine more squads like this being trained by skilled clones. Together, they would make a formidable army. Now, this idea of the clones training their replacements and then working together in kind of like mixed units actually makes a lot of sense. You have a lot less waste, and then you have this bridging over effect from the clone troopers to the stormtroopers, so there's no kind of gap in security. But unfortunately, that's not how the Empire works. It's not very logical. The Empire is actually like one large organized crime family, with Palpatine sitting at the top and all of his underlings like Tarkin and Rampart scrambling around working on different projects and bringing them as gifts to the Don, or Emperor Palpatine, to take a look at. The more gifts or good programs you bring Emperor Palpatine, the more you are in favor with the Emperor. It's competition, but without any rules, and that means everything degenerates very quickly into chaos. Now, Palpatine was pretty smart. He kind of distanced himself away from all of these uh, different policy makers. You see, Palpatine rarely ever gave direct orders. He spoke through advisors like Masamita and spoke about larger picture ideas, more general concepts of what the Empire should be. This is actually a very common strategy used by dictators and SARS. Um, by not saying anything, by not issuing any specific commands, any failures cannot be traced back to the leader. Instead, you'll have fall guys like Vice Admiral Rampart. And Vice Admiral Rampart was a very ambitious person, and that's where he kind of got into trouble. You see, he didn't really trust the Kaminoans, and he kind of wanted them gone. He also never really had much respect for the clone troopers, even though individuals like Crosshair showed that he was extremely loyal and efficient at his job. And so it was only natural for Vice Admiral Rampart to order the arrest of the Kaminoan government and then destroy their cities using orbital bombardment. Now, later on, Vice Admiral Rampart claims that this was not his idea and that someone else gave him the orders to do this. And I tend to believe him, actually. Even though Rampart didn't really love the Kaminoans, the destruction of the Kaminoan cloning facilities was something that he couldn't just order without instruction from high command. Plus, his destruction of Typico City was just plain sloppy. I mean, several of the clones who were present during the operation, including Slip and Cade, would try to become whistleblowers and let the public know about the true cause of the destruction of the surface of Kamino. The official narrative was that some giant storm destroyed Typico City, which is kind 
kind of ludicrous because, you know, the Kaminoans were used to the weather plant, uh, patterns on this planet. Vice Admiral Rampart didn't even bother to remove the recordings of his ship partaking in the destruction of Tipica City from his memory drives. Either Vice Admiral Rampart is just plain stupid and undisciplined, or he just felt untouchable because someone high up in the Imperial chain of command was watching over him. You see, the whole deal for Vice Admiral Rampart was the same deal that most of Palpatine's advisors and acquaintances were given. Use whatever tools and means necessary to reach goals set out by Palpatine. As long as you don't fail and achieve your goals, any transgressions that you might have made are erased. If you should fail, though, then you will be persecuted by the law to the fullest extent. In Admiral Rampart's case, he had to make sure the defense recruitment bill passed in the Senate, and he's reminded by Grand Vizier Amita several times that his career depends on this one moment. Unfortunately for Rampart, Senator Ryu Chuchi would uncover the Vice Admiral's role in the destruction of Tipica City. She would reveal the concrete proof she was given at a Galactic Senate hearing, and that would shock the galaxy. It's at this point Palpatine shows his genius and starts twisting everything to his favor. He points out that while Rampart is clearly an evil man for destroying the Kaminoan cities, what's even more worrying is the fact that the clones were blindly obedient towards his orders. And that's what led to the destruction of Typica City in the first place. Palpatine would use this as an example for why the clones were not to be trusted. He would also begin to promote his own defense recruitment act during this period of time. Due to the nefarious actions of Admiral Rampart and the immediacy of the bill on the floor today, it is my opinion that this legislation is our future. You see, Palpatine was always able to read the rim and finesse people. You see, Palpatine was an extremely patient individual. He would never push forward any type of policy that was unpopular with the masses. Instead, he would create an environment where the legislation he wants to pass becomes popular so that when he does pass it, it already has an audience that's willing to accept it. And so instead of waging war against the Jedi like all of his Sith predecessors, Palpatine would try to goad the Jedi into attacking him while he was elected Chancellor of the Republic. This worked well and allowed Palpatine to carry out Order 66 with most of the galaxy approving or at least understanding why the Jedi needed to be destroyed. I think it's moments like this that really define who Palpatine is as a character. There's a reason why so many Star Wars fans love him and consider him one of the best villains in cinematic history. Well guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think, and also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy.